Well, something really cool happened uh, at summer school last year. We met Mike Branvold, uh, and he did a great presentation uh, all about how the rock band KISS can help us better understand what's happening in the social media space. And the response to Michael was uh, so strong, and he had a good time here uh, as well. I think that's where we first actually uh, uh, created the Kip Winger fan club. Was that, isn't that right? I think so, which we're still, by the way, taking uh, applications for, so if you're uh, interested. But uh, Michael is just a fascinating guy. I'm going to let him speak for himself uh, here in a moment. But he is a music industry consultant. Uh, he really uh, made his name uh, by uh, Gene Simmons, uh, tapping him to, uh, to put together the whole uh, KISS Online uh, interactive program. Uh, and subsequently, Michael has done work for bands like Motley Crue, Rod Stewart, Madonna, uh, and Britney Spears. So uh, uh, he's, uh, he's been there, he's dealt with them all, and he's got some great insights about how we can learn from music stars, rock stars, pop stars, about how to best use social media. Mike Branvold. Thanks, Fred. Uh, I just want to take a moment to thank Conclave and Fred for having me back. Um, had a great time last year. Um, so yeah, my main space of working is with rock stars and musicians. Um, an interesting group to work with, I must say. Um, and what I want to talk about today is a little, little different than last year. I want to talk about how to tweet like a rock star. Some rock stars really get how to tweet. Uh, the first thing I want you to understand is tweeting is basically a reality show. And because it's a reality show, before you get involved, the first thing you have to do is understand your limit, meaning what don't you want to talk about? What are your privacy concerns? What don't you want to divulge to the people who are following you? Do that now before you've got 20,000 people following you and accidentally post something that you didn't want to post. Once the cat's out of the bag, you can't bring it back. But once you determine what your limit is, go right to that limit, show it all, post photos, talk about it all. Don't worry about whether they might be interested in it. Just post what you're comfortable with and let them follow you. Um, and also keep in mind, Twitter knows no borders or territories. You're talking to fans, you're talking to followers around the world. Don't focus just on the ones that are local, regional, in your state. Focus on everybody who's following you. They are all interested in you. That's really important. And then remember, they're following you because they look at you as a celebrity as a star. So they expect a little bit of ego coming out of you. So don't be afraid to have an ego. Act like a star. You know, as much as they want to know your daily life and your daily activity, they also want that excitement and thrill that they're following somebody that, you know, they look up to that is a celebrity to them. And the most important thing, post with passion. Whatever you post, make sure you believe in it. Make sure you stand behind it. Because at some point in time, it could be the troll, it could be anybody who's going to call you on something you've posted. And if you didn't post it with passion, you're not going to be able to back up what you said. Just be true and be honest. So let's get into a um, couple, couple examples. So a client I'm working with out of Nashville, Andy Gibson's on Curb Records. Uh, up and coming country musician. And the key thing about Andy is, it's not about the size. And this goes back to it's not about the number of likes. Uh, a few months ago, there was a radio station that had a poll on their website. Who's your new favorite up and coming country music artist? Andy was in the poll. One of the other artists on the poll was Scotty McCready from American Idol. Scotty's got a million and a half fans between his Facebook and Twitter accounts. Andy at the time of the poll had 12,000 fans. Scotty only beat Andy in this poll by 1,000 votes. I know that if the poll had ran another day, Andy's fans would have come up with the extra 1,000 votes to make him the winner. So it's not about the big number. It's about the fans that will get behind you and support you. And this is important because Andy went out and recognized his fans. He's got a relationship with his fans online 
where he, he talks to them, he responds to them. He does things as simple as saying, thank you. If somebody says, I downloaded your song, I love it, he says, thank you. Below here is an actual response from one of the fans. Oh my God, you do know my name. That is the first you use my name in a tweet. I could cry. It's the little things. That fan who said that is going to be a supporter for the rest of their life. And all it took was him to say thank you. So don't get overwhelmed of, I've got to come up with these elaborate posts and interesting things to say. Sometimes thank you is all it takes. Sometimes it's just a simple retweet. Sometimes it's, it's just saying thanks for following. Thank you for downloading. Thank you for listening to the show. It goes so far. Fans want recognition more than anything else. And you can do that so easily. Another client, Greg Kinn, um, rock star and morning show DJ. Um, K Fox out of San Jose and, and San Francisco. One of the challenges I have with a lot of musicians is, and it's probably the same with many of you, you don't have hours upon hours to sit there and respond personally to every single post and write great replies. So with Greg, we came up with something where it's more of feeding the discussion. He's got almost 10,000 followers on, on Twitter right now. He'll pose questions out to his, his followers. Every day, he'll try and get a question out there. Really simple things, this or that types of questions. Simply stating, David Lee Roth or Sammy Hagar. That's all he says. And then the rest of the day, the Twitter followers are just exploding and talking amongst themselves. He'll post playlist games, you know. Give me a playlist. Give me songs that are about uh, going on a vacation. Now, you can also take that and extend it even further. You could use that to generate playlists. You could create a Spotify playlist and then share that and further have interaction through that. He also does, and actually I do this with many of my clients, but something called Follow Friday Fan Love. So Twitter as the Twitter users years ago invented this thing called Follow Friday. Every Friday, you list the people that you want to kind of recommend that other people should follow. Well, he takes it a step further and calls out his fans. So basically, every Friday, every fan on Twitter who mentioned him by name gets a Follow Friday. And I'll show you at, later on another slide, a great app that will help you do this and make it very simple. Again, the reaction and the response you'll get from a follower who sees somebody like Greg Kinn saying, follow Friday fan love, thank you, is amazing. That one post has secured a relationship really, really intimately with a fan. Another band called The Art of Dying, they use Twitter to actually crowdsource content. So don't think of Twitter just as conversation but you can actually generate content from it. They had a second single called Sorry, and basically they asked their Twitter fans to take pictures holding up signs that just said sorry, or write sorry on you know, your arm and take a picture of it, and send it in. They got hundreds and hundreds of submissions from fans. This content was then used on the website, which again goes back to recognizing the fan. There's nothing cooler than seeing your picture on the website. Great honor, great honor in a follower's mind. But they then created a music video out of all of these photos that came in. So Twitter generated content. It got fans involved, and it recognized the fans. Again, everything goes back to fan recognition. Some of the applications that um, are out there that I use, and I know we had, there was earlier discussion, Hootsuite. I love Hootsuite. I live by Hootsuite. And, and one of the big reasons it works for me is, and, and you have to look at these applications for your specific needs, but Hootsuite allows you to manage multiple accounts. So you could be managing a Facebook page, a Facebook profile, multiple Twitter accounts, a YouTube account, LinkedIn accounts, and you can have them all controlled through Hootsuite. You can make one post, and it could go to all of these accounts. Or you could selectively pick the accounts you want it to go to. You can schedule posts, really, really important. So, they, and actually just yesterday, Hootsuite 
announced a new feature called Auto Schedule, which is going to be very much similar to this other program called Buffer App. I use this every day. I get up in the morning and I'll read through my news feed and all these interesting stories that I want to tweet about. With Hootsuite or Buffer App now, I can send all these tweets to the application and the application will auto schedule them throughout the day for me and post them the best time during the day. You could say once an hour, every two hours, but the key here is you found all this great content in the morning, you set it up, and now it keeps tweeting out through the rest of the day. Now, you still have to interject throughout the day with some of the recognitions, some of the personal replies, but I'm not reading my news, and I'm sure most of us are not reading news all day long. You might do your news research right away in the morning and you're done. This is a great way to fill up a tweet stream and keep it active. And believe me, it's great for when you go on vacation. I was on vacation a couple weeks ago. I filled up my, my uh, tweet stream with a whole bunch of tweets while I was on vacation. It looked like I was still there, even though I was on vacation. Um, Hootsuite allows you to take photos. It's a mobile app, which is great for musicians. Um, you know, when mobile content is great. So when these guys are out on the road, with Greg Kinn, I was actually using it at the recent um, concert that he did last weekend, taking pictures of him on stage, sound checking, and posting it directly to his Twitter account and Facebook account simultaneously right from the venue. It's an amazing tool for doing that. Followfridayhelper.com is the, is the website that um, I use and, and many of my clients will use for Follow Friday. It's a simple website. You go there, you log in with your Twitter account, and it'll show you over the past week, everybody who has retweeted you, everybody you've retweeted, everybody who's mentioned you in a post over the last week. And you can just go through and click their names and it'll create a post and you can tweet it right from there. Extremely simple. You can go through, you know, 150 people who've mentioned you, you know, you can get that done in 10 or 15 minutes. And again, the upside of that is all of these people are going to be retweeting it. They love that recognition. You've, you've created a great bond with them. Instagram, amazing app. If you're not using Instagram, I really recommend it. It's a killer app for taking photos, posting the photo to the Instagram network, but at the same time simultaneously sending out the photo to Facebook, Twitter, as well as Foursquare if you've got a Foursquare account. And photos are gold. People love to see photos. It's so easy to do this through Instagram. Um, so basically, successful rock stars care. They connect with their fans. They acknowledge their fans. They request content from their fans. And they engage with their fans. It, the, the, the common theme here always is recognition. They just want to be recognized for listening, for following, for supporting. You don't have to buy their devotion. You don't have to give them stuff. Just let them know you read the post, that you liked it, that you retweeted it. You can do so much without having to actually spend hours typing. And I realize we've all got other things to do during the day that we cannot reply to hundreds and hundreds or maybe thousands of, of, of tweets every day or every week. But there's ways you can do this very fast, very efficiently, and still get the recognition from the fans. And believe me, it will go so far with you. So there you go. Thank you. And uh, as, as Fred mentioned, last, last year I was here talking about the KISS School of Marketing. I've got an e-book. Feel free to go download a copy of that if you're interested. And uh, any questions, I'll be free to take them. Questions, just show your hands. I'll bring the mic right to you. You, you, you. you have quite an expert in front of you. I'd take advantage of him. And I, I enjoy your material, Michael. I Thank see it you. every day. And, you know, I, I'm glad to now have a peek behind the curtain on how you do it because it's like, does this guy sleep? There's a, there's a newbie next to you that's got a question. <laughs> <laughs> Can you kind of explain the, the essence of how every person counts? Uh, sometimes in radio... Um, we, as a former program director, have a tendency to think that the only people that count are the people that either have a diary 
or in the PPM market, a meter. And we don't, in radio, always think every person counts. We only think the people that Arbitron have found count. So can you kind of expand on why every person counts in the social sphere? Because every person, I mean, I think it was mentioned in one of the earlier um, panels, is, is every person's got their own audience. So that one person that you say thank you to, you may not be aware of it right now, but their followers might have some very, might have some very influential people in there. They, they may have a network of people that include people that could actually impact your station, your, 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 um, your list, other listeners. So the, the key thing about social is the one person has a voice and that voice gets amplified over and over and over again and you don't know where all those other ripples are going to be going. You can, you can deal with that direct relationship that you've got by saying thank you, but that one fan who says to their thousand other Twitter friends or goes on Facebook or, you know, just shows up in an event just going, oh my God, I love you, I love you, I love you. It, the, the, the magnification really isn't known when you just make that little thank you. And that's why you've got to treat every relationship like gold because you don't know where it's going to go. Any other questions for Michael? When, oh, sorry, back here. All right, go right ahead. Um, I'm curious if you can speak to quantity per day of tweets. Is there a limit or is there a recommendation for how um, many you there, Well, I'll, I'll start by saying there's definitely a difference between the number of posts to Facebook per day and Twitter per day. Um, you can do a lot more conversation on Twitter in a day than you should ever do on Facebook. Twitter's conversational, so you can get into a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations. That being said, there's nothing wrong with doing easily a dozen tweets in a day, easily. You can also get away with retweeting or, or tweeting over the same message more than once. Um, you might tweet something in the morning, and then you might revise the wording, but tweet the same thing again in the evening. You've got different people reading at different times of the day. And then you can do it all over again tomorrow. Facebook, that would never fly. That's going to just show up as just constant spamming in people's walls, and they're not going to like that. But again, I'm sure everybody's like this. I can't keep up with all of the tweets from the people I follow. So I'll see a bunch of tweets in the morning, but I don't see anything again until the evening. I've missed all that conversation. Don't be afraid, don't be afraid to tweet it again a second time, a third time. You know, you, the nice thing about Hootsuite is you can change that message and reschedule that tweet for the next four weeks if you wanted to. Why does that sound so much like the way we have to program our promos at radio stations? It's exactly the same thing. I've got one last question for you. I'm going to put you on the spot. What's the dumbest thing that you've seen a rock star or a pop star do socially? Socially, what, what, what's the biggest epic fail, the, the, just the dumbest tweet, biggest mistake? I mean, come on, they're there somewhere. Well, I mean, it, it, it's, it might seem kind of obvious, but the dumbest thing is to do nothing. You've got these people out here talking about you. You go on Twitter and you check that at mentions column of people talking about you, and if you're not replying to them, that is the stupidest thing you could be doing. Because there's a whole conversation happening out there about you, and you're not part of it. That that's just a big mistake, you know. A la Kip Winger. <laughs> Thank you very much, Michael Bramvold.